My name is Alicia Berry. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Proctor Academy. Some of you guys might recognize me from a couple of the other online panels. Um, but the goal of this evening, unlike some of the other panels, is to focus on the things that are happening outside the classroom at Proctor. So this is going to be your student life panel this evening. Um, so, you know, a lot of focus around residential life, advisories, clubs, weekend activities, and anything else you guys can think about. Um, just in general for our community, this is a great time to ask. And so we have some wonderful panelists joining me this evening. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up a slideshow real quick so that everyone can see. Also, just to let everyone know this evening, this session is being recorded. Um, and it will also, after this evening, be living on our website. So if you had to log off um, early for any reason, don't worry, you'll be able to find it on our website to check it out later on. But as I mentioned, this evening is about student life. So at Proctor, and what you've probably realized at this point about boarding schools is yes, it is school, but this is also your life for however many years that you find um, it being your landing zone. This is a home away from home. And so there's a lot that happens outside the classroom on our campus um, and you know, involving students and faculty and just everything that's going on on the day to day that we're gonna share with you guys this evening. And so without any further ado, I'm going to address, um, introduce our wellness chair, I'm Megan Hardy, she's a faculty member here, an advisor, she's been a dorm parent for many years, a teacher, she does a lot around here, she's coached, and she's kind of um, going to take it away from here. Hi everyone, thanks for, for hopping on tonight. As Alicia said, my name is Megan Hardy, and um, I just want to give you a little bit of an overview about what we think about when we think about student life at Proctor. Um, Leash, can we have the next slide? Yeah, so when we think about student life at Proctor, this is really everything outside of the classroom. And so I think you've had the opportunity to hear about off-campus programs um, on other um, evenings and also our academic program, but this is really um, what we think about when we think of a residential boarding school. Um, and so our mission is pretty simple, is that we, when students come to Proctor and as they move through their experience here and get ready to launch into what's next, are we think about it as like growing great, well-adjusted humans that are ready to tackle whatever comes their way, um, not only while they're at Proctor, but also when they leave to move on to the next part of their life. And while you can see it says our goal is simple, go grow good, healthy humans, we realize that that, that work is really complex because each student comes to us um, prepared to take their own journey here. And that journey can look very different depending on if it's someone who's transferring for another school or who's a day student or a ninth grader or a residential student. Um, and so we're really prepared to meet students where they are, connect them quickly with our community and allow them to sort of establish that foundation um, to launch into their Proctor career. So we're gonna go to the next slide, Alicia. So when we think about student life at Proctor, it encompasses lots of different things. And this word jumble can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but there are some real pillars of our um, school, right? We think about community and one of the taglines we always use is together. Um, we also use our school motto a lot, um, learn to live and live to learn. Um, but if you look right in the middle of the screen is advisory. Um, and that's a really important part of getting our students connected to our community right away and then supporting them as they go through their journey. And your student's advisor really acts, um, or really tries to form a partnership with parents, right? To support students um, in the best way possible, helping them find um, which doors to open and walk through while they're here. But if you look at some of these other things, um, you know, we have a great um, group of international students, about a third of our student body is our day students. Um, they have opportunities for clubs where you're gonna hear from our students about their favorite things to do on the weekends. Um, we think about sports and activities that happen after that academic day um, ends. And then of course we have our dorms, right? Our dorms and around that, like how do we get kids good sleep? How do we get them nutrition as, as residential students? And so we kind of look at student life as all encompassing of a kid's journey. I'm gonna go to the next slide and we can talk a little bit about what the day-to-day -day looks like. So this is a day in the life of a Proctor student, and it can be a little bit overwhelming because it looks pretty full. Um, but if we start over on the right-hand side of the screen at about that 315 mark, 
that's when what we think of as student life really takes over. Um, and so after classes and whatever time that may be, um, each student is hooked into an activity or a sport, right? And that's a way yet again, to introduce them to another group of students um, where they might find their community, right? If they're an athlete that plays soccer and that's where they feel the most at home, that might be something that hooks them in. If they are a performer of some sort, right? They might find their place in our theater after school or an artist um, or someone who likes to be in our woodlot. So that's just another way for us to get kids connected. Um, then we have dinner and then you can see um, from 6.30 to 7.30, um, our faculty members run extra help sessions. And so those are optional. So let's say I'm someone who I struggle in math and my math teacher offers extra help on a Monday night at 6.30. I might finish dinner at 5.45, show up at that extra help for 6.30. There's gonna be a lot of my classmates there most likely. Um, and then I'm done by seven and have a little bit of time before study hall starts. But if it's another night that I don't need help, I have free time from the time my activity or sport ends until the start of study hall. So whether you're a boarding student or a day student, the expectation is that at 7.30, you start our two hours of study hall. Um, and there are several locations our boarding students can do that study hall, one of which is their room, obviously, but then they can also sign out to go to our library, which is a really great place to study. Some of these students who are on here, I see in the library quite frequently at night. Um, day students are welcome to come to the library for study hall, or they can take off and head home at that point um, if they've been on campus for hangout time. And then after that, after study hall ends, there's a little bit of free time in the dorm. And then around 1030, we try to get kids settled down so that they're getting rest, or at least there's quiet time to finish studies if they still have them. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to turn it over to our students, and we're going to have them. That's why you guys are here is to hear from, from these awesome these awesome individuals. Um, so they're just gonna take a moment and introduce themselves and um, and then we'll get to your questions. Hi everyone, I'm Jane. I am a day student and I'm from New London, Elkins, New Hampshire. So my day is pretty similar to what that layout was, except I do have a little commute time. But um, I would say my favorite thing um, about student life on campus is hanging out with my friends in that like 5 to 7 30 range on school nights because everyone just really wants to be together. Hi, uh, I'm Brendan Gertler. Um, I'm a sophomore and um, my hometown is Acton, Massachusetts and Wellesley, Massachusetts. Um, and my favorite part of Proctor is probably assembly and hanging out uh, with like my advisees because I feel like that's, I have a really strong connection with my advisor and my advisees. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Catherine Noso. Um, I'm from Cedar Park, Texas. I'm a four year senior here at Proctor Academy and I, um, the sports I do are soccer, uh, JV hockey and lacrosse um, and I've gone on ocean classroom and this winter I was lucky enough to get on to the European art classroom so I'll be taking off for the winter and coming back in the spring um, but yeah I'll hand it off to the next person. Hello everyone I'm Oz Atwood um, as you can see in the picture there I'm a soccer player I'm a senior um, and I would say my favorite part about student life at Proctor is our dorm trips. Alicia knows about that. She likes to drive us out to Target or Chipotle, whatever it may be, but that's definitely a highlight of my week when it does occur. Um, hi, my name is Kiara. I'm from Lawrence, Mass, and I'm a freshman. And I say my favorite part of Proctor is our weekend activities. I know on Sunday, I went to Canopy Lake Park and had a great time with my friends. Awesome, thank you guys all for introducing yourselves. And so um, we definitely have lots we can chat about as we are waiting for questions to come into the chat. 
Um, but feel free for anyone that's viewing this evening to just in the chat, if you direct it towards everyone or towards myself, um, Alicia Berry, we can, um, I'm here to moderate questions out to the students, but really it's these voices. And so lots that we can talk about in here as well, um, as these students mentioned, and as I had noted previously, um, anywhere from student life, dorms and residential life, being a day student, um, clubs, advisories. Um, you know, we have a, a student who's been an international student in the past. So any questions there? Oz, you transferred in. So you can definitely talk about things on that end if anyone has questions. Um, and Jane, Brendan, and Kiara are all, you know, Jane and Brendan are sophomores and Kiara's a freshman. So they can definitely talk you know, more recently about that transition they've had as well. So any questions that you have, feel free to let us know. But what we're going to do, what we're going to do now, is so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I would highly recommend in the top right hand corner where it says view to move down a speaker view. Um, so that way you can see the students as they're chatting away, which is always nice um, instead of the tiny little icons, but to each their own on that, certainly so. But it looks like we definitely have a handful of questions coming in. Um, so the first question, actually, I might just uh, take on, it says, what's a Jedi weekend? Those are actually two different things. Um, and so the, the weekend activities and then Jedi work, um, which is, um, just two separate notes there. And I'm sure Megan can talk more a little bit about the Jedi work that we're doing here. Um, and then weekend activities are a separate one, but Megan, maybe you want to mention a little bit of what Jedi is and that work for families. Sure, I'm happy to do that. So um, that's our um, equity and belonging work that we do at Proctor. And um, JEDI is just our nickname for it, Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Um, and we, this year, well, last year, we hired, um, maybe it was three years ago now, we now have a director of equity and belonging, Will Wamaru, who's working um, community-wide to do education around different um different parts of identity, um, different parts of community, so that Proctor is really a place that's inclusive and that people feel like they have access to the support that they need, that there's education happening um, in our community to support all members so that they feel like this is really their home. Thanks, Megan. Um, this next question is about day students. Um, specifically talking about study hall, which Jane, I'll let you answer, but then maybe also if you guys want to chat about, um, you know, the difference between boarders and day students, for you boarders, if you have friends that are day students, what that's like in the dorm and everything, and Jane, for you to um, talk about your day student experience a little bit and open up a little further past just study hall. Yes, of course. Um, so as a day student, study hall can vary. So as Alicia mentioned before, day students can go to the library or you can just pop back home um, or extra help is really important as well. So normally on um, these like weekday nights, I'll stay for math extra help. I'll walk at about like 715. I'll walk up to a dorm or the library or the mathematics building and I'll go and the I'll sit with the teacher and the teacher will really um sit down with you and dissect like what if you miss something in class if you I, I know as a ski racer I'll miss some days of um, work and so you can catch up with that extra help which is really important um, or some nights I'll just go home and I'll find a little quiet space and I'll just study at home. Awesome. And outside of study hall, um, what's it like being a day student on weekends? Um, tell me, do you have any boarding friends? Do you ever spend the nights? Things like that. Let them, you know, let, let people get a vision into the day student experience here. Of course. Um, so as a as a day student, I'll, I like to come for breakfast because I like to be on campus as much as possible, just personally. Um, but I'll head to class after breakfast and then um, your day will wrap up and you'll have sports. And um, I like to hang out with my friends and we'll play games on the turf. We'll get like spike ball going, soccer going under the lights um, most nights, or we'll head back to a common room in a dorm and day students are allowed in common rooms and um, boarders rooms with um, permission. And um, some weekends I'll host boarders at my house 
or some weekends, um, the boarders will host me and I get to have a little bit of a border experience and I'll stay in a border storm. Cass, do you have anything to say? Yeah, I'm just going to add um, to like the day student um, life and how I have a lot of day student friends um, who live close by and well, especially my roommate, she's not a boarder, but she lives 40 minutes away from Proctor. Um, and we've been rooming since freshman year. So four years stuck with my awesome roommate. Um, and usually on the weekends that we don't have big games or there aren't big events going on on campus, um, they invite me and sometimes other boarders to stay, go spend the weekend at their house. And it's just a really nice time to go off campus, um, enjoy like a home cooked meal, um, talk to the parents, just relax for a little and kind of have a different perspective and a different view of things. Um, and I definitely take advantage of going off campus a lot with my friends. I think it's it's a really nice, I really like how we have day students and boarders um, and like the, the balance is super good. Um, and I would say some, I mean, some people would be um, kind of worried that day students like aren't included or something like that um, because of the boarding students life. But I have friends in my dorm all the time. As long as we like ask permission, they, they can come into our room. We have like a projector going on and we can just watch movies or just hang out in the common room. Um, so I would say pretty day students are pretty like involved into the boarding students life or just like in general. Like I couldn't even tell you who's a day student and who's a boarder because they, it's like everyone's the same and like no one gets treated differently or anything. So that's like something I really like to highlight about. Awesome. And then maybe continuing along those lines, um, I'm not skipping, I'm going to go back and answer some of these earlier questions, but a question just came into for borders. Um, does it feel lonely and deserted on the weekends? Do a lot of people leave? Maybe Oz, you're, you're kind of far from home. Um, what is that like on weekends? Yeah. So, um, usually on weekends, uh, there are a bunch of activities um, that we can sign up for on Aura. So that's stuff like uh, like s'mores or bus rides or football games. Like um, last year, one of my favorite weekend activities was a playoff basketball game when the girls made the playoffs. Um, and we went over there and um, my uh what my English teacher drove us over and we played music on the way and it was just a great time um and so yeah a lot of the times the weekends are opportunities to make memories like that um when Proctor provides the opportunity if you take advantage there are some pretty cool opportunities for you to actually experience thanks Oz and Kiara and Brendan, you guys aren't that far from home. How often do you guys go home on the weekends? Sure, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? You can go first. Okay, sure. Um, so basically, um, on the weekends, um, sometimes uh, I, I play football, and so sometimes we'll have uh, games closer to my house. Um, so uh, this year we played Pingree. Um, and that was like 45 minutes from my house. So my parents went to the game and then they uh, picked me up after. Um, and then I got driven home afterwards. Um, but probably at, at least once a month, um, more pe some people go home more than others. Um, it, it really depends. Um, so I'm like, uh, so some weekends I will, I, I go home at least once a month, uh, every month especially with like uh, vacations and stuff like that. So I'm never, I'm never too far from home. Um, I guess I'll go. Um, for me, um, how do I, okay. So yeah, boarders do ever go home on the weekends. It's just for me, like I don't, I can't have transportation for my mom to come here, but once in a while, like I do like go on Aura and I make my pass and my mom just wakes me up on Friday and I come back on Sundays or sometimes I'll stay later on Sunday and come after study hall or before study hall on Sundays. This is varies probably. Awesome. Thanks guys. And then Cass, I'm just going to swing this to you and then we'll go back up and start the top for questions. But this one kind of along the same lines, um, 
for international students. I know you're living in Texas now, but maybe you could talk a little bit about what it's like for those shorter holidays, like the long weekends um, or like coming in in the beginning of the school year and whatnot. Yeah, I'll kind of answer um, kind of like the three last questions. I feel like I could top it off. But um, so coming in, as, coming in as a freshman, I, well, I've lived in Mexico my whole life. So I was an international student um, until sophomore year when my, my parents decided to move to Texas. But um, coming all the way to New Hampshire and having my parents be in Mexico was definitely very scary for me. I didn't know a lot of people up here, kind of didn't know what, I, what to expect. But I qu like quickly figured out that like my dorm parent, my freshman year dorm parent up in Davis, Erica Wheeler, she is like, she was like my second mom. Um, she, I, we would go into her door, like into her apartment and we, she would cook for us and her apartment doors were always open, even if she wasn't on duty. So I do think I like answering the question, like um, living off campus away and like feeling deserted on weekends. I don't think you, you feel like left lonely and deserted. I think there's a lot, so many things going on on campus on the weekends that you're kind of like, it's kind of sounds weird, but you're not going like, to kind of think that much about home because there's just so many activities going on. If it's, if it's just like football games, soccer games, or even just talking about like, they, sometimes they bring in food trucks and, and there's just so many activities going on. Um, and for international or like longer shorter holiday sorry I people can't stay on campus international students you just have to arrange it with Proctor and just let him know but usually I try just to find like one of my day student friends that lives closer by and just they would invite me over to their house for like three or four days and it's like a nice way to get off campus and go somewhere else um but at the same time go with like a family um so yeah I think I'll end it off there yeah, thanks, Cass. We also arrange um, different trips. We have an international student coordinator. So um, I know for our last fall family weekend, when it's a four day weekend, um, those students went up to Maine for the four days with a handful of faculty members. So we coordinated that so they could be with other students, which is nice, especially when you're brand new in those first couple months. Sometimes, um, you know, students create relationships in different speeds. So if you don't have a day student to go home with, you'll go with other international students um, and some faculty members. Or one time Cass and I lived at a camp for 10 days together. So we did do that. Um, but thank you for that, Cass. Um, I guess I also saw a question here that I'd love, and maybe we can all touch on it a little bit, is it's really about, um, this one was asked about dorm parents, but just in general, who are kind of those big adults when you first come into Proctor that you connect with? Maybe talk a little bit about orientation leaders, advisor, and dorm parents. Um, Brendan, I'm going to put you on the spot first before I put Kiara on as our, uh, Kiara as our true freshman, but Brendan, maybe you can chat about um, how that was for you last year and which adults you kind of connected with in that support network, but everyone can talk a little bit about the different adults in their lives here. Definitely. Um, so who I uh, definitely connected with first um, was my orientation leader. Uh, because that's one thing that like kind of brings everyone together at Proctor because like one of the graduation requirements is orientation and so my um my orientation leader uh happened to be uh my advisor so it really helps me uh to connect um uh with him and I know that's not the same for everyone but even if you um have a um, even if it's not your advisor, you're still going to be able to have that one person that you've lived with already for four or five days. Um, and so you're able to talk with them if you have any questions or anything. And we go through a lot of uh, questions that anyone has on orientation. That's like one of the final things that we do on last day of orientation is talk about that. Also, you'll have a lot of friends from orientation because you're you're living with everyone for like a week. And so you're, you're going to like, everyone's, everyone knows each other uh, then. And so from there, you're just able to talk with other people and hang out. Um, also your dorm parent and your advisor, as well as teachers are people that you can talk to about anything. Like I, I saw my math teacher in um, the dining hall today. And I was like, Oh, hi, Bill. How are you? Um, and so it's, it's just, 
it's great because everyone's um, all in one space. And so you're, you're able to connect with people and talk with people all the time. Uh, if, if someone else wants to go. Um, yeah. Thanks, Brendan. Before I put Kiara on the spot, I'm actually, I realized um, we didn't really explain what orientation was. Jane, as one of our student orientation leaders, do you want to let everyone know what orientation is? Sure. So um, orientation is the um, kind of like opening part of your proctor experience. It's a five day backpacking trip with two adult leaders. And I would say about like five to seven um, people in your group. And so um, I loved orientation so much that I came back and I decided to be a student orientation leader and kind of like be the um, voice between the leaders and the students. Um, and we did a loop in the White Mountains called the Flat Mountain Pond Loop. And you hike about like two to five miles a day. You summit peaks. You learn how to build a fire. You really um get some of these like harder um skills down and then also you really open up with your group because you're um I would say you definitely go through some struggles and hardships through orientation um whether it's the weight of your pack or um you didn't sleep well but you really you really um connect well with your group and I would say it's a really awesome opener to the school um and it kind of sets you up well for your like the however many years you're at Proctor. Thanks, Jane. Kiara, maybe you could tell us about orientation. Had you ever been camping before orientation? I didn't before mine. I've never done camping in my entire life. And it was a really like new and weird experience for me. But um, I think like people who, who, who you first connect with and have a bond with is basically what like what Brendan said, like your, door, uh, your, um, your orientation leaders they first like get you through the orientation uh, like start of it but then like besides that like I know um someone I really connected connected with was like my advisor Megan actually and Megan has like really taught me and showed me around the school and really like maybe connect with other people and made me do a lot a lots of things like I know Megan made me do this um this event with like about women's power and everything. And it was just really nice. And um, yeah, Megan's really helped me. And aside from that, like dorm parents also, dorm parents would like really help you with the dorm, connect with their like dorm people. And I know my roommate, like I didn't really connect with her, but like Lori, my dorm parents, she helped me a lot, connect with my roommate and yeah. Thanks, Kara. And I just saw another orientation question. Um, if it's just for ninth graders. Um, it is for all new students, um, no matter what year they come in, we try to pair you with students your age. So typically if you're coming in as an upperclassman, you'll be with other upperclassmen. And if for any reason you can't go the year that you start, um, you know, sometimes there's injuries or what, Oz, do you still go on orientation a different year? Yes. And how was that for you, Oz? You came in, so you came in last year as a junior, but we sent you out your senior year. We got that graduation requirement out of the way. That's right, we did. And I was actually, I was a de facto leader on that trip as well. So that was pretty cool. Uh, first time went out, um, I had just gotten my wisdom teeth taken out. So I was having some problems with that. I had to go back to the health center. Um, and so, that was okay. Um, and then um, I had, so then I had to go back to do the full trip this year. And that was a lot, that was actually a lot of fun at certain times with Brian Thomas and Hunter and as the leaders and some new students that I've became really good friends with this year that uh, I was able to meet on that trip. Um, and so, I mean, one thing I really want to say about the trip that shocked me was some of the things that I saw, like I saw like a 60 foot waterfall, like some wild stuff like that, that I just did not expect. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely my experience, uh, on the orientation trip. Thanks, Oz. Um, I saw some other questions that are coming in that were submitted to me and some to everyone. 
asking more about the advisory system at Proctor, how that works. Um, maybe Cass, because you've been here the longest, but we'll go down actually. It's nice to hear um, everyone because we all have slightly different relationships with our advisories um, for sure. Um, they definitely in some aspects for you in prospective students, they are your Proctor parent in some ways. And for prospective parents, they are your Proctor parent. They're that main point of communication um, between the school and home. As an advisor, I definitely collect a lot of information and I'm sending it out to parents. But, um, and I grew very close way back in the day with my Proctor advisor here, um, who's now Cass's dorm parent even. But uh, Cass, maybe you could tell us what advisory has been like for you, how you use your advisor, um, how often do you see them? So my advisor, Carl Methin, is one of my favorite person, people that I've met. He was actually here and coached my dad when my dad went to Proctor Academy back in the day. Um, and he is just um, a person I can go with and talk about anything, um, if, even if it's like social life or like something that I'm struggling with, academic literally quite literally anything um but I came in and my advisor was someone else my I had Maggie Kennedy who doesn't work here anymore but she was my advisor for freshman and half of so sophomore year um but she was really nice too she we changed I changed the advisors just because she left school um but uh, Proctor does a really good job if if you don't really connect that well with your advisor um you can talk to Karin, who's like uh, assistant head of school, and she can, we can, like, they can figure out um, someone new if, if you like have a teacher that you really, really like and really connect with. Um, maybe you can get into her, in the, their advisory if you, if there's space. Um, but I see Carl probably, well, we have assemblies on Mondays. So that's where the whole school gets together um, at the assembly hall. So we see you sit with your advisory. So I see him there. And then Tuesdays, instead of assembly, there's advisory. So it's like 35, 40 minutes um, to go meet with your advisor. And you usually, everyone goes to different like spots and it's just time to discuss like anything you want to discuss really. Like if you have any questions about school or want to help with like an aura pass, or even if you want like your advisor to read over your like, papers or anything your essays um just like a really good person just like my I would tell my parents I think I go tell Carl everything um and yeah I think that's pretty much it from me from me if I want anyone else wants to add anything yeah Jane tell us about your advisory experience Sure. So um, I have an all girls advisory um, and that's really, really nice. But I know some advisors are co-ed or um, or whatever. And um, we'll all meet, like Cass said, on Mondays and Thursdays and Fridays for um, assembly. And we'll sit with our advisors and we'll um, just kind of go through assembly together, hear the announcements together. And then we'll probably circle back on Tuesdays. Um, and my advisor is Ellie Moore, and I love Ellie Moore so, so much. I can always lean on her whenever I need absolutely anything. I'll send her a text. Today, I actually just got a little candy gram from her for Halloween. Um, and your advisor always makes sure to reach out to you and um, help you whenever you need it, or even if you don't, and is like constantly pushing you to be better and like telling you to seize these opportunities. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to highlight that. Thanks, Jane. I think it's important to note for everyone too, um, kind of how the advisory system as incoming students, what that looks like. Um, in admissions, we get to know you so well. So we typically will create the pairing with you in an advisor um, for once students are enrolled. Um, just because, as I said, we get to know you really well throughout the process. Um, and it's definitely an important fit. We want to make sure it's an adult that we think you're going to connect with. Um, but it's also, as Brendan mentioned, you become very close with the kids in your advisory. And um, unless you switch advisors, which often only happens, you know, once in your proctor career. Um, if you don't, though, you're with their advisor all those years. So when you come in, it's like you have these older proctor siblings a little bit. Um, and then as you grow through the years, you all of a sudden become this mentor to new young students coming into your advisory, which is a great leadership role for students. 
but it means it's also really important when we're looking at advisor placements, we actually look at the full group of students that are in there. So we want to make sure that it's a cohort that you're going to um, feel really comfortable with um, and connect with because the students are just as important in that group. And so we make that connection there. And then as an advisor, we help with the scheduling, um, but also just as we mentioned earlier, so much happens here beyond school. So we're here for all of it um, and communicating out to parents. Um, so usually that point person for parents when you're off campus to help give you a view into campus and into your child's day-to-day -day life, um, certainly. And um, as it was mentioned, sometimes you do switch advisors. We are very supportive of that as well, because um, if you switch advisors, you still have your old advisor still in your life. And that's like just having an additional adult there, which is great. Um, we do a really good job at Proctor cultivating a lot of adult to student relationships um, to help students feel comfortable. But lots of different ways, tons of meeting points. Um, definitely see your advisor. We have four times structured into the schedule to see your advisor, but um, you just bump into each other in the dining hall too. My advisees are finding me left and right. I'm actually constantly hiding from them more than anything. But um, no, it's a great aspect here and definitely a family structure. Um, Megan, I'm not sure if there's anything you wanted to add from being an advisor here. Yeah, I think the only other thing I would add is that um, one of the things that's so great about Proctor is that the adults play so many different roles. They are involved in so many different things. So um, a student's advisor may also be their dorm parent or might be their coach or might be their math teacher, right? So there's just constantly uh, developing of that relationship in different facets. And so it's really fun as an advisor to see your student, one of your advisees, which I consider my kids, right, in all different different parts of their day, not just in that straight up advisory part. So, um, and you know, that's sometimes when students develop a deeper connection with someone, it's through one of those other roles. And then of course we wanna support that change to that group so that that student really has autonomy and control over their experience and building their support web. So that's not something as like faculty members, like we get grumpy about. We're like, yeah, you found your people, let's do this, right? And like, and just know that I'm always, like Alicia said, I'm always in your corner, right? I'm always here if you need something else, so. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, I would say as an alumni, advisory was my favorite part about Proctor as a student. And now on the flip side, it's still my favorite part about Proctor as a faculty member. Um, so definitely a great space um, for connections, certainly so. Um, so I have a question that's talking more about the transition in, um, and I think we can talk about it all from different levels. I mean, Jane, for you being a new but day student, Cass, you being a new student in international back freshman year, Oz, you can talk about your transition um, from being a, a transfer student in the older years. Um, and then Brendan, Kiara too. I mean, Kiara, especially you're, you're fresh, you're brand, brand new here and what that has been like for you. So, um, Oz, I might put you on the spot first as somebody who came in older and then Kiara, I might jump to you. Sure. Uh, okay. So I came in to Proctor after having a uh, kind of a rough experience. Um, I was going to uh, another boarding school in Pennsylvania. And I was just, I was feeling like I hadn't found the right fit. Um, the school that I went to before Proctor, like a lot of other schools, like definitely gave me and my family a lot of talk about how supportive it was academically and how many resources were there to help me, um, <clears throat> you know, if I were to need that. And I really did need that, but my school didn't have it. And especially over the pandemic, like that only made things worse and only made things more complicated and difficult uh, for my school, which already wasn't dealing with it very well. So, um, I knew I needed to change uh, my school, and so I just went to um, I went to some people. Uh, I heard about Proctor, and that was the main thing I found out about was like the support academically speaking. And then that's so that's pretty much the main thing I came to Proctor for, and I have definitely found that I got it. Like. Um, 
I, I'll just talk about learning skills a little bit, um, which I feel blessed to have uh, worked with Linda Sargent for the past year and some change, um, who she was kind of like my second mom, especially uh, at the beginning of the year. And um, I found that that just worked really, really well for me, was just having someone in the room with me that was just good at helping. I, I don't really know how else to describe it other than that, but she just kind of knew um, what I needed in that hour or maybe 70 minutes last year. Um, but she just knew what I needed um, to be able to keep me moving throughout my day. And that was really what I was looking for, what I was looking to get out of high school that I still felt like I was missing. Um, and so as far as like my transition, um, I would say, especially since that was the main piece I was concerned with, I was pretty happy with it. Thanks, Oz. And maybe Kara, you don't have to look quite as far back or Brendan, look like you were about to jump in actually. Brendan, you go first and then Kara, I'll give you a little bit more time. Um, and then we'll put you on the spot as our only freshman on the panel. Um, I just, I just wanted to say, I, yeah, I, I spend a, like a lot, a lot of time with my, uh, my learning skills specialist and she's really helped me. Um, I think that's one of the best things about Proctor, um, coming in as a freshman, I was really, um, like worried about schoolwork, but I, she helped me like so, so much, even, even now I'll go to her extra help sessions and, um, it's great. Um. Yeah. Thanks, Brendan. And then Kiara, if you want to give us a note of how this recent transition's been for you from um, joining the new community and being a boarder and being a freshman. Yeah. So um, for me, I came into Proctor as like in this little, like a little apartment in, in Lawrence and just having to come to Proctor is a really good opportunity. Um, the transition was pretty hard for me just in different food varieties and also just coming into a new place where not really people know me as as as, as a freshman and so um so this was pretty hard but my mom kept like kept with, like was with me throughout the transition and just my friends like my old friends from Lawrence and just them having to be with me and being here and supporting me throughout this because I know one of my friends go to govs and, and, and other boarding schools and they're going through the same thing so it's just kind of like, you know, like having, having the support with you, you know, and coming in, having your advisor and your dorm parent and people who can support you in Proctor Academy, not only just aside from like schoolwork, but like support you mentally and physically for what Proctor has for you. And just um, coming into Proctor was really hard for me because like my grandma didn't really want me going to a boarding school. She wanted me going somewhere else. And so I was like, I'm taking this opportunity because it's something new for me. And she understood that. So it's just, you know, like having that support with you and having your parents support you throughout your entire journey to Proctor, not only freshman year, but senior year as well. So, yeah. And so you mentioned dorm parents have been a good and advisor. Um, what were some other ways that you kind of started feeling like campus was home for you. Uh, what do you do for an afternoon activity? Like what are some of the other places that you've kind of um, found some spaces on campus? Um, so I've been joining and I'm really, I'm really an outgoing person. So I like doing lots of things. I've started doing JV football and honestly, it's a really great idea to go do, <laughs> to like uh, just do football. I feel like um, jumping into a start where Go, like going into football was a really big start for me because it's a big step to where I want to be so joining football and meeting all these new people and meeting like and meeting Brendan like I didn't know Brendan at first but like now like now I see like Brendan and now I'm like talking to him like saying hi to him during the dining hall and it's just really fun to get new people and so with your advisor as well like Megan she's taught me a lot like um I, I, as I said, I'm a really outgoing person, so I really want to put myself out there. She's helped me get into this panel and get me to like put myself out there and like honestly, like just like be an outgoing person, you know. So yeah. Awesome, and it sounds like you'd probably now have like 40 built-in big brothers on campus uh, with football. 
<laughs> awesome. I'm seeing a lot of questions too revolving about around dorm parents and dorm life. And so Cass, I might pass the mic to you because you've now lived in four different dorms on campus, all in varying size, different dorm parents. Maybe you can talk more about what, um, what dorms are like, how you're supported, how they function, um, roommates, things like that a little bit. And the variety, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the variety on campus. Um, yeah, so freshman year, I lived up in the hill. So it's right by the turf um, in a dorm called Davis House um, with the dorm parents being Erica Wheeler and Wheels. Um, and they had two kids and two dogs. Um, and that was just the like introduction to Proctor. Um, and in that dorm, it was it was only like five freshmen. So it was like me, my roommate, and like another room with two freshmen. And then there were sophomores, juniors. So I was able to meet um, upperclassmen and like just like older people straight off from the bat, like in my dorm. And they really helped with like the whole transition, like just like telling you like the little things you need to know, just like um, like little tips that are really useful, you know. Um, and sophomore year, I lived in Mac House with Kyle Connolly, who is my soccer coach as well. So, and my uh, AP Human Geo teacher. So I see him a lot. Um, but he was really, it was just so nice to be able to get closer with Kyle and have him there as like my second parent, honestly, like having him out on the field as a coach as well. Um, that dorm was all sophomores, so it was just a bunch of my friends in there, uh, some new girls that I, I didn't really um, know that much from my grade. So that was really nice being able to, to get closer and meet new girls and just become really good friends with them. Um, sophomore year, no, junior year, sorry, I lived in Sally B, which is usually a upperclassman dorm. And that's one of the biggest camp, uh, dorms on campus with like 19 or 20 people, right? I think around there, yeah. Um, very big dorm. Um, they that It's such a big dorm that there's two like sets of dorm parents. So I had Trish and Kate and Annie McKenzie, um, which I love both of them. They're also the best. Annie McKenzie was also like, is now like my third parent here at Proctor. Um, she has uh, a German shepherd and I have two German shepherds at home and she, she knows how much I love my dogs. So she would let me go walk her dog sometimes, like whenever I was missing home and stuff. And she was just a great person to come back to after classes and talk to about anything. Um, and I now currently live in, um, Cortland, uh, dorm, which is the smallest, the smallest dorm on campus with only five girls in there. Um, so it's me and my roommate and then a triple and which are also three of my best friends. So I feel like everyone says how it's like we, we it's our house. Like I feel like it's such a small space, but at the same time, it's like nice and quiet. And I, it's a good like dorm to have, especially this senior year, just like with college and everything, you need that like extra like quiet space. Um, but I've definitely experienced it, like all around, just like from small dorms to big dorms to like uh, just like single um, gray dorms. Um, and honestly, I I could I would not mind going back to any of them. Like if you told me to go live in Davis, I would go back and live in Davis. Um, they're just all around dorm parents and the people that are in there with you are like they're all my sisters and. Um, I just kind of call it like, uh, like I, to my parents, I kind of joked saying how like boarding school, or like Proctor is kind of like a summer camp, but just with academics, because you literally get to live with your friends, like do sports, but, and also do classes. Um, so I just, I, every single time I go back home, I'm like, like, yeah, like it, it's so cool just being able to live with my friends and hang out with them all the time. Um, so I really cherish all the all the memories and all the moments that I've had in every single dorm, um, and I will carry them on um, even after I graduate this year. 
so yeah I'll, i'm gonna miss it definitely definitely gonna miss it i didn't pay her to say all of that but that was really good cass um so um and as cass alluded we have a wide variety of dorms here on campus um we have 21 dorms at the moment running um our largest dorm being i think it's 19 students um, our smaller dorm, as Cass said, is five. So huge variety there. Larger dorms do have two sets of dorm parents, so just additional support. Um, and those smaller dorms, like the one that Cass is in now, is one set. Um, and so I'm in a larger dorm, so I have another set of dorm parents, um, which brings me to, Oz, just tell me actually how fabulous your dorm parents are. No, um, but Oz, maybe you could talk a little bit. You've had roommates in the past. You have a single this year. Um, and kind of what it's like, you know, choosing roommates or um, or deciding on a single and how dorm lottery slash choosing a dorm works. Okay, well, Alicia is a pretty great dorm parent, though. She made brownies last night and they were awesome. So I just felt like I had to say that. But sorry, what was the question, Alicia? <laughs> I actually did pay him to say that. No, just... um what it's like then after your first year at Proctor, selecting a dorm, how that process works, deciding if you want a roommate, having a single, okay. kind of all of that. Uh -huh. So that was a little bit different for me than it probably is for most people. I applied to be a dorm leader. Um, I got it and I was put in a dorm that I didn't really feel good about being put in. Um, I just, like it just wasn't my personal preference and so I just went to Kyle and I oh they said what is a dorm leader it's just like an elected position within the dorm um kind of a uh like a middle point between the teachers and the students um where you just get a lot of communication about what's going on a lot of mentorship um stuff like that and so uh, I applied to be a dorm leader and I didn't really, I wasn't too hot on the dorm that they had me in. So I just went to Kyle. We had a conversation about it. Uh, Kyle is the um, person in charge of our whole dorm situation pretty much. And so I just went to her. We had a conversation about it and she got back to me and she told me like, we have this new kind of situation going on um, called carriage. And they just presented me a great deal like with a with a double you know and my own bathroom and everything so i couldn't really turn it down and uh i was i was just i was happy with it um and so that's where we're at now and i'm eating alicia's brownies every night i did decide i was really going to get into baking this year um but it worked out well to have oz in our dorm um certainly so and then brendan you're a dorm leader aren't you uh, yes, I am. Uh, it, that, that's that been a great experience. Um, just um, last year, I was actually in the same dorm that I'm in this year, but it's just the room right above <laughs> from where I was. Um, but it's it's been a great experience. Um, last year, um, it was actually kind of a like a weird experience because my dorm parent from last year moved to a different dorm. And we got a, a whole new uh, dorm parent. So that was cool to kind of have, I kind of have had two experiences, um, even though I've been in the same dorm. Um, so basically as a dorm leader, um, every night I'll go in and uh, I'll check in how everyone's doing um, at around um, 10, 1030. I'll just check in everyone. And I'll be like, I'll just ask them if they, if they, um, could just go to their room so they could have kind of like um just like quiet time you don't have to go to bed you can if you want um but also it's been good um talking uh like with all the freshmen and like if they have any questions they can just come to me um I've had a like a bunch of freshmen that were uh they were wondering about stuff um like some people had never used a laundry machine before and so I taught them how to do that and then like some people didn't know how to do the vacuum. So I did, I helped them with that. Um, but it's, it's, it's been a very good experience. Um, I, I have a lot of friends in my dorm. There's also another dorm leader, uh, my friend, Nate. 
overall, it's just been, it's been an awesome experience to, to be a dorm leader. And I'm, I, I'm definitely considering it, doing it uh, next year as well. Brendan, I'm nervous. People are actually just tricking you into doing their chores for them. Um, <laughs> but I just saw a question, just briefly going to answer um, if students clean their own dorm. We do have housekeeping that comes into the dorms, but just teaching um, students of being in a shared living environment and being cognizant of the mess they're making. So once a week, they'll typically do dorm chores like vacuuming the common room or wiping down the kitchen um, and things like that. So, but the housekeeping does come into those spaces. Um, and there was a handful of questions revolving around off-campus programs, which I would love to point people in the direction on our website. Last week, we did an off-campus panel. And so tons of information about off-campus programs there that I would highly recommend for you to seek out um, just because I don't think we're gonna have enough time this evening as we're wrapping up. And then along the same lines, I'm seeing a handful of questions being submitted about the arts at Proctor. Um, and so my apologies that we weren't able to get to those questions this evening. Um, but I do wanna kind of put a little plug in that next week we are doing an off-campus um, panel revolving around arts, athletics, and afternoon programming at Proctor. So there's going to be a lot of time to answer questions in that space as well. So my apologies for not getting there this evening, but just being cognizant that um, we are actually in the students' study hall time right now. They've given up a good chunk of their study time to come help us with this panel. And for Cass and Oz, um, this is deadline number one for um, college applications this evening for any early um, action one. So it was really amazing that they were able to step out and do that this evening. But I think um, I'd love to uh, close this evening. Maybe if each of you guys can share thus far what your pro your favorite Proctor memory has been. Um, what's something just that, you know, a moment or an experience that you've had that you're going to hold with you um, moving forward. And so I might start actually with the youngest because Kiara you have not had too many Proctor experiences yet, and we'll move up and end with Cass, who's been here all four years. Um, I think my pro my favorite Proctor. Well, oh, I'm thinking about it right now, actually. Hold on. Um, I think my Proctor like experience, my my, my favorite Proctor experience is just um, Megan taking us taking our advisory to the wise and getting food and paying for us because that's like really really thoughtful of her. Yeah. Megan is a fabulous human, um, so she should be just your favorite Proctor experience. Um, Brendan, I'll go you, and then Jane, and then Oz, and then Cass. Um, so last year, there was a um, an off-campus activity um, during, I believe, Sunday, um, and I had I had never really rock climbed before, but there was a, um, a trip out with the rock climbing team and we went out to this big cliff and I was so scared at first because I'm like what are we doing um and then um they had ropes and everything and I learned I climbed a whole entire uh cliff it was it was awesome um and yeah that was definitely also uh jumping in the Proctor Pond last year that was so fun with my friends and fishing club and stuff like that thank you Brendan, I remember jumping in the pond with you freshman year, um, but I would say my favorite um, memory so far was last year. Um, we have our own ski hill and I'm an Eastern skier. So I spend like just hours and hours on that hill. Um, but they opened it up to the whole school and they turned on the lights and we'll go, we went night skiing and um, all my friends, we went to the top it was like nine o'clock at night on Saturday and we got these torches that they were handing out and we skied down the mountain with the torches, holding out the torches and it made this beautiful like glowing snake. And so I would say that that's my favorite memory so far, but I'm ready to make more. Okay, so um, Brendan actually stole my answer because he said jumping in the Proctor Pond which I was going to say that because I had an amazing time jumping in the pond, celebrating a victory last fall. Um, and that's a lot, another thing a lot of people don't know about the Proctor Pond uh, is it, it's actually very good for your muscles after a game. The cold water helps a lot with recovery. So, uh, yeah, there's my plug for the Proctor Pond as well. 
honestly really hard to choose um the top moment at Proctor I I just have so many but um if it's not I mean not speaking of off campus Ocean Classroom was definitely an once in a lifetime experience that I will never ever forget um but on campus I would probably say um Holderness weekend for me, that really does it. Just playing under the lights against Holderness, our rival school, and having the whole school on the sideline cheering you on and just beating them and everyone rushing onto the field and hugging everyone. I think that's one of my just biggest and most memorable moments. Definitely and definitely very, like, we'll forever remember that. And, hey, hopefully soon. Holiness weekend's coming up, so we better we better make it work. Yep, Proctor Soccer. So yeah, thank you for everyone for listening. And yeah. Yes, thank you again um, to everyone, to Megan for joining us this evening and for all of our amazing students. Um, and so once again, if you missed anything this evening, um, this alongside our previous panels that we've been doing weekly are living on our Proctor website. It was, um, the link was also placed right here in the chat for you all. Um, and I highly encourage anyone, if you weren't able to answer your questions this evening, to reach out to your admissions counselor. We are happy to not only answer questions, but also connect you with more current students um, to help you just continue those touch points. Um, because we definitely understand that that sense of place and hearing from the current students is gonna be one of your best resources here. But thank you all, and I hope you all have a great evening.